I'm trying to get in my 15 minutes of drum practice oh, yes, before we start. That's why started. I didn't. Yes, I didn't want to disturb. Oh you. wow, cafe is over. Cafe is over. So much happens here. I know. So yes. much happens here. You serve the best coffee too. Oh okay. Mm, it smells like Beaujolais. Uh huh. Probably is. Could be Beaujolais coffee. Ah. Uh -huh. Have they tried that? Very unique. Oh brand. wow. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get at it. Okay. I'm continuing to read the uh, uh, newspaper columns that I wrote for the African Times newspaper from 1996 to 1999. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to say that perhaps from time to time, as I read these things, mm -hmm. coincidentally, we will have a sort of a, a relationship to what happened in 96, 97, 98, 99 will have a relationship of things that happened then with things that are happening now. Hmm. They Seems do. that history repeats itself, except that we hmm. are in a, a historical frame of reference that I feel that will never be repeated because we will never have uh, another Hopefully. El Tromposo, Hopefully. El Tromposo yes. uh, in the Oval Office. Hmm. You might have a lot of more, well, you might have a few more white men in the White House, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it was Bush, it was Clinton. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> let's go off with the, mm -hmm. with the reading. Okay. This one, this one I call the Tarzan Syndrome. Mm -hmm. For some reason, the Tarzan Syndrome and how to celebrate Kwanzaa, what oh. fired me up was that at one point, I don't know why, but they were showing Tarzan almost nightly. Uh, some, you know, you couldn't turn on the, the movie channel without coming across Johnny Weissmuller. Here or, or where? In, in America, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Okay. As a matter of fact, ironically enough, I happened to be in Africa, in Ghana, mm -hmm. in 1992, and my friends who were living in the same complex I was living in, mm -hmm. uh, uh, calling to me one day to come and see the picture, see the movie. Uh, the cinema. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, what's on? Tarzan. I'm living in Accra. Accra, Ghana. I know it makes you, it's, it's one of those things that want to make you go, hmm. Mm. Well, okay, I, I was trying to be a good guest, so mm -hmm. I walked into the next room and a whole house full of people pulled up their seats. They weren't eating popcorn, they were eating a Kelly Willie. Uh -huh. uh, Watching Tarzan, uh, I took it for as long as I could take it for about a minute and a half, and after that I had to excuse myself. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I could never make them understand that Tarzan was uh, not such a great thing. Mm -hmm. The Tarzan syndrome and how to celebrate Kwanzaa. 
It would have been better if one of my friends had phoned to tell me that it was on. That would have offered some cushioning, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. It was my bad to remote it onto the screen all by myself. It was November the 2nd, 1996, PP, 3, 6 p.m., 6 p.m., and there was Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, swinging in the breeze on Channel 9. My immediate reaction was panic. I raced through the house to make sure there were no children on the premises mm -hmm. and settled in front of the television, feeling the same gut-wrenching horror that I feel whenever America's favorite fascist, Adolf Hitler, is shown on one of the endless documentaries that we are saturated with every year. Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. The first 10 minutes pulled me, kicking and screaming back into the solid days of American cinematic apartheid, as well as the other regulation stuff. It was all there. The stilted dialogue by craterness mesomorphs, <laughs> mesomorphs, compounded by a box of rock school of acting covered by a brutally uninteresting story. In order to keep us in Africa, home of the Lord of the Jungle, but to keep black extras from making any ducats, the absurd storyline tossed some white actors in Planet of the Apes headgear at us. They were supposed to be descendants of an incestuous bunch of nut brains who escaped when their world Atlantis sank somewhere off the coast of Africa. They don't make it plain which coast, but it doesn't matter. If they were half serious about believing the story that they were telling, it was not apparent in any of the scenes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just from time to time, inappropriately to be sure, a sort of all-purpose music percussion background was punched onto the soundtrack. Third-rate drumming at its best. I would have been considered a Mago Santa Maria, mm -hmm. a Carlos Patapo Valdez, Armando Parazza, mm -hmm. and Francisco Aguabella all put together. Okay. If my drumming had been played on the soundtrack instead of what they played. Okay. Tarzan in Africa in 1996? <laughs> 1996? <laughs> I'm not sure I watched the monstrosity come to an end or if my consciousness blotted it out. It was disgusting, but as an African American, I've become accustomed to being disgusted by media treatment of our people. We can fight it, and we do. But I had to contain my disgust and peek into some other corners. One hour of insults to people of African descent and others with a sense of sensitivity. I had to peek into other corners. It hurt to see African-American actors, actresses playing the roles assigned to them. The script made certain that every shred of dignity they might have manifested was whipped to death by the racist pen. The expression <laughs> on one lovely sister's face will always haunt me. It said, we're doing this because we need the money. We're doing this because there's nothing better to do. We're doing this. We're doing this. Her expression made the whole idea of a level playing field something to fight for. So what's now? It's another day, and my remote happy trick of the finger flicks me back into a jungle as dense as the one Tarzan was swinging through. I've landed in the bizarre world of the Negro-centric sitcoms, more back to back. There, in that glitzy, tricky, always youthful, frothy, mouthy, nebulous place, nothing really has any <laughs> substance. Substance. Dedicated study a dedicated study of one rapid-fire, blistering episode after another leave my senses cold and numb. What was that about? Was that really supposed to be funny? <laughs> to whom? 
Why not have the screen filled with snowflakes? Mm. That would be funnier. Mm -hmm. Our poor children, as though they didn't have enough weight on them already, now they have to have more back to back. And once their tortured brain pans have been stewed in hours of spoon-fed fluff, they can take their usual places on the pavement as the police knee them in the neck and slide the old cuffs on if they haven't already been shot. It must be quite confusing for many of our youth to go straight from being a homeboy from outer space to being a homeboy in a tiny jail cell. It must be really confusing to be considered cute for a couple hours and then dangerous for the rest of the night. Who's responsible for these weird situations? Basically, we are, basically we are. Whenever African Americans and their allies decide to create the climate for changes, changes happen. Or a city may get a hot foot or something. Mm -hmm. The problem with the Negro-centric sitcoms is that many of us have learned to glamorize self-hatred so effectively that good, oh, look at this. I got stuff pinned up here that I should be correcting. Let me read that again so we can keep the continuity. The problem with the Negro-centric sitcoms is that many of us have learned to glamorize self-hatred so effectively that good taste, analytical thinking, and our history may no longer exist in some minds. Let's change the channel. Channel 2, November 24th, 7 p.m. <laughs> 60 minutes time. More it is safer doing some suave snipping at the at Af 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 Afrocentricity, some say Afri Afrocentricity. We're talking about the same strong feeling. After a few minutes of this segment of 60 minutes, I felt like throwing some Chitlin juice and Safer's face. Hannibal, black. Cleopatra, black. Really? Strangely, they never allowed it kind of doubtfulness to surface when addressing Eurocentrism. Dr. Molefe Asanti, a number of teachers in an Afrocentrically developed school and several articulated young articulate young Africans <laughs> talked about what it was like to be an African in America. And it has nothing to do with what we're seeing on television. And uh, I had to stop there because it was making me so pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah, that's yeah, Afrocentric yeah. enough, huh? Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, that I wanted to go on to the next, to yeah. the next column. I got that way right in these things sometimes. Mm. You know, I would get so mad that, mm. uh, you know, I sit up and scribble with a ballpoint like a like a medieval scribe. Sometimes the tip end of my ballpoint would start catching on fire. I have mm. to go dip it in water in order to cool it off. Uh -huh. Or cool yourself off. Yeah, that's right. Cool yourself down. Okay. Uh, this one is called How We Were Butchered in the Passing Year. Once again, the beginning of forever is here, and those of us who have seen it happen should rejoice. What year is that? This what was year? 1996. Okay. December, as a matter of fact, the middle of the month, okay. December 15th, oh, 1996. Okay. okay. We should rejoice because millions who are war-ravaged, starving, homeless, spiritually bankrupt, have survived and been saved from those miserable days that seem to last for an eternity. We should rejoice because there are millions of people on this planet who are gracious, gentle, humane. We are too often reminded of how vicious and mean-spirited the human animal can be, seldom asked to think of positive forces. Yes, of course. We know that the Western media, considered by some to be a stepchild of Hitler's minister of propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, 
tell a big enough lie often enough and they will believe it, he said. Tell a big enough lie often enough and they will believe it. Yes, he said. Heil Hitler. Back then and there. Etc. Hmm. History. Feed us garbage so that they can collect ex expensive waste. But those are forces we must overcome. For those of us who follow the trends of racial schizophrenia, it's quite obvious that the past year for people of color, and especially African Americans, was a brutal year mm -hmm. to survive. It would require pages to list the church burnings alone. And of course, it's never a good year when Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, mm -hmm. is allowed to swing in and out of our antennas, in and out on our antennas. They had antennas then. Way back then, 1996. Yes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that isn't considered a hate crime, what is? Channel 9, 10 p.m. Sunday. Don't allow your children in to watch it and be careful yourself. Mm. W.E.B. Du Bois wrote something to the effect that racism would be the biggie of the 20th century. <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no doubt that his vision would have encompassed the 21st century too. Mm. Racism is America's cholesterol. Mm. America's cholesterol. Mm. It is killing more and more of us each day. The simplest proof comes from a casual study of how the mainstream media looks at Africa, for example. As usual, there's not much written in our newspapers or shown on our newscasts about Africa unless there's a catastrophe, a famine, a war, or a coup. Mm -hmm. The gruesome circumstances of refugee life in Rwanda, Zaire, Central Africa, Thousands of people being shuffled around like pebbles was almost overshadowed for weeks by impending news of Madonna, Madonna's baby. Mm. Madonna's baby. Or oh, was it Tarzan's latest fling? Mm. We called each other and practically shouted across the distance, look on page 18, there's an article about Africa. Mm. How is it possible that a continent so huge could escape notice from the mainstream publication so consistently. Hmm. That is, if there isn't a catastrophe, a famine, a war, or a coup. From time to time, we have polled editors of mainstream publications to find out why there are no fully fleshed articles on Ghana, or why the Apache regime is not condemned more intensely by African Americans and others who treasure freedom. What is happening in Northern Africa and Eastern Africa and the small Africans out there in the Caribbean? One editor, a candid kind of guy, simply said, well, offhand, there's nothing happening in Africa that our readers are interested in. <laughs> Kofi Annan, a career diplomat from Ghana, has been recently elected Secretary General of the United Nations. One of his first obligations should be the business of making certain of making certain da -da -da. Da -da -da. of making certain ah I thought it was there <laughs> that the rest of the world knows where Africa is and what is happening there if we stretched the coin slightly we might be able to say that the African-American communities, Haitians, Cubans, Venezuelans, Colombians, Puerto Ricans, Brazilians, etc., are given media variation of the African treatment. We are largely ignored unless there is a catastrophe, a crime, or riot. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. The exceptions may be frequently found in the movies that our children are programmed to watch. The movies they are programmed to absorb tend to act as a catalyst for every violent act anyone ever thought about doing. Blow it up! Fire it! <laughs> Shoot it up! Or, or Self-destruct! Those four pieces of encouragement have to be considered Hollywood's African-American mantra for the 90s. 
it's easy to reach that conclusion when we look at the mogulish attempts to create crossover movie jumps with Denzel Washington, uh, Whitney Houston feel good about Preacher's Wife be considered crossover if it had a couple of hundred extras being blown up by an exploding oil tanker or if they were caught in a huge church fire lit by a renegade black man who were denied Klan membership. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Uh, maybe I was predating Spike. Black, yeah, black Klansmen, yeah. <laughs> or so set it up to yeah. shoot it out with whomever. No, none of these scenes would fit the crossover scenario. The cynics who are responsible for crossover ethics would never want to have their children fed a diet of blood, senseless violence, and stupid plots. The crossover movie is designed to make people buy a lot of popcorn and exit smiling. How many gang wars have been fought in theaters showing the preacher's wife as opposed to the one showing the four sisters blundering through life with Uzis in hand? One of the sisters said in an interview with a fool, we're not telling people what to do or how to behave. It's just a movie. Hmm. How lame. As usual, if we judge what we look like from the media perspective, it wasn't a pretty year. And it wasn't entirely the fault of the ex-football player that the orange juice people once loved so much. Oh, that's true. Mm. I'm going to have to organize my columns a little bit better so that mm -hmm. I won't be turning things upside down this is in true. order to find out where I am. Well, for a person who reads the newspaper regularly and pointed out... Speak! Okay, pointed out articles Speak. to me. Look. I wanted to know, have you seen anything about Ghana and this is the year of the return in any of the current newspapers? Like uh, in recent years? Yeah, well, yeah, recent. This is, you know, 2019 is supposed to be the year of, retur of the return okay. for Ghana. And we know that because of our friends like Susan Amagashi and uh, Kojianka. But uh, for American press, has anybody that you know printed an article about that? But would you believe that this is ancient, 1996. Right. And since then, uh, Ghana has uh, benefited from uh, oil discoveries off coast oil and so forth. So, but I would be willing to bet you, you could go through newspapers for a week, other than the New York Times, possibly, mm -hmm. and not find any current updating or any updating of what the economic miracle that is Ghana okay. has happened. Never, never been explored. They're still focusing on uh, what might be happening in, in the murderous middle of, of uh, Africa with uh, Kabila in the Congo and you know the the, the, the insane tribal wars. A vacation in South Africa, vacation well, in Tanzania, vacation uh, in Egypt. Yeah, but okay, no it's funny, either. at each end, mm -hmm. someone may say, uh, okay, go to South Africa because it's like California. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, not, they're not suggesting that people go to North Africa because there's yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Islamic strife. Mm -hmm. I want to say Islamic cruelty because mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, Tunisia and Algiers and places like that. Right. Egypt is, is hell. I saw a documentary not very long ago that dealt with the uh, the Arab Spring. It's a little oh, bit dated. Yeah. But there were women who came out on the streets to protest uh, mm. a Mubarak's regime. Right. And they wound mm -hmm. up having their, their clothes torn off in the middle of the street. Watching that with you. And it's still somewhat that medieval. Mm. Uh, concerning West Africa, we hardly know what's going on. I mean, most people have no idea where, they used to know where Liberia was, mm -hmm. uh, where Liberia is. Mm -hmm. They used to know where Cote d'Ivoire was, uh, the country north of Ghana, mm -hmm. but then they'd have to find out where Ghana is. Uh, <laughs> in a conversation I had not too very long ago with uh, uh, somebody who was geographically hit, mm -hmm. after we had been talking about, about 10 minutes, he said, well, where's this Ghana that you're talking about? Whoa. 
And it's because they hadn't had a, a catastrophe, a catastrophe, a famine, or a war, yeah. or a coup mm -hmm. since 1957. But they're inviting African Americans to come home. That was recently done mm -hmm. and, uh, in the year 2019. 2019. Well, hopefully, hopefully, some people will Pick look into it, it and mm -hmm. you know uh, pay much more attention than, than the, the mainstream media pays it. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the Chinese, the Chinese are really up to date on Africa. As a matter of fact, you know, get into a study of that economic colonization that's happening, and you will discover that the Chinese have become the, the Englishman of the 21st century in Africa. Gotcha. And that's all I got to say about that. I bid you a salam alaikum. And a lafia. A lafia. A lafia. All right, I did that one wrong. All right. Ciao. Hmm.